Hi there, in this video I'm going to attempt to explain Eric Weinstein's theory of geometric unity in less than 10 minutes. Let's go. First, to understand Eric Weinstein's geometric unity, we have to understand two things. One is a space in which all of matter exists within, and two, what is matter itself and how, does, how do we get its properties? Einstein's theory of general relativity describes a four-dimensional manifold that bends and shapes uh, that gives us the concept of relativity as well as how we can describe motions of celestial bodies around greater mass and gravity wells. Then we have the standard model which describes how the properties of matter are created in a mathematical sense and how they all interrelate to each other. So different particles, different, um, different force carrying particles as well, and how everything relates to it, everything else that creates the matter that we know. Basically like the um, periodic table, but for subatomic particles. If you combine these two theories, you can explain the motion of all bodies in the solar system, and you can describe all the interactions of matter in. If you combine these two theories, you can almost explain everything in the universe, except of course, dark matter and dark energy. However, with these two theories, is our model actually complete? What a lot of people don't know and isn't necessarily intuitive is that general relativity and the standard model actually have underlying mathematics that help you predict and basically chart what is actually happening in each of the theories. These mathematical charts help you determine where you are and what is actually happening. And without the mathematics that creates these charts, you wouldn't actually be able to get any useful information from the models themselves. You wouldn't, for example, be able to track the motion of a star through the galaxy, or you wouldn't be able to understand what possible interactions can happen between two different particles. So the way that the math is used to chart the actual properties of matter and to chart what's actually happening in space-time is super important. To explore this a little further, let's just ask the simple question of what is a light wave a wave in exactly? A photon is a point particle, so there is actually no medium through which it travels through. Light waves are described as traveling through fields. These fields are little nested topologies on every point in space-time. In the example of light and a light wave, we can think of a simple circle connected at every point in space. This allows light to wave up and down, but not necessarily in a real substance, but rather a field. While the properties of matter for other particles are a little bit more complex, it comes from this same idea. However, instead of one little circle, you have multiple different circles connected to other circles in kind of complex ways. These complex circle groups are actually called Lie groups. And they often consist of multiple different dimensions. Have you ever heard from string theorists that there may be nested hidden dimensions at the very smallest points at every point in space-time? Well, this is basically what they're talking about. These nested topologies give the properties of matter to matter. They also give us the ability to track, understand, and chart what is actually going on. 
Now that we have explained some of what we already know about physics and how we use mathematics to describe what's actually happening and to chart what's going on, let's talk a little bit more about geometric unity and what it proposes. Geometric unity, simply put, attempts to create both of these mathematical shapes from one simple premise. If one simple premise can create the topology of space-time as well as the topologies needed to explain all of the properties of matter, then it is basically passing through and creating in its own way everything we need to describe the universe. And if there is a containing set of geometries that contain these uh, that contain space-time and these nested geometries for the properties of matter, then you have a way of unifying all those geometries together and you can chart everything on one unified topology. In order to do this, geometric unity first discards the topologies of general relativity and the standard model as the simple starting point of how this topology might form, this grander unifying topology might form. Instead of attempting to fit general relativity into the box that the standard model uh, exists within, or to shift and shape the standard model to fit general relativity, he suggests that instead, you should start with neither of those and try to create a model topology from scratch that might unify both of these. This model should essentially recreate the equations of motion as described by general relativity, as well as recreate the equations that describe spin and all the equations that help us understand the standard model. If the unifying geometry does this, you don't necessarily need the old models of the standard model and general relativity anymore because they're embedded in that other type topology. In essence, it is suggesting that you change your perspective on how to actually get these equations of motion and understandings of the standard model and it basically states that you can get these equations from a simple premise that starts from scratch. Weinstein's premise is that instead of space-time as the base, well, the foundation of the universe, there is instead something a little bit funky going on. Instead of general relativity being the playground, it is instead something that is created from another couple of topologies interacting with each other. And as these topologies interact with each other to create general relativity, they also create the topologies needed to understand the properties of matter. To understand these topologies, we have to create an idea of something called proto-spacetime. Now, proto-spacetime just means before spacetime. And more specifically, in Eric's theory, it means before we put the metrics into a spacetime to make it work like general relativity works. Once you take out these metrics, just think of it like the theory that you know about general relativity is very floppy. It won't give you any results on what is actually happening between different celestial bodies. It could give you any different results depending on how you look at it. This ambiguous version of space-time, this floppy space-time, is proto-space-time. Eric Weinstein suggests that you can create all the complexity of the standard model and general relativity if you just start from 
a simple point of having two proto space times. These proto space times interact with each other in a way that creates the complexity necessary for the standard model and that it also interacts in such a way that it creates the definition and the specific metrics selected for for general relativity. While it recreates in its topology an interaction that causes the equations of mo motion to reemerge and the complexity of the standard model to reemerge, it leaves us with a lot of topology that isn't necessarily describing anything that we currently understand. This remaining topology has spaces that are, for example, made of three time and one space and other metrics that could fit general relativity, uh, but would just be a little bit too floppy. In Eric's theory, these actual different metrics of space time would potentially exist. So the space time that we know and love is actually just a slice of all these other possible space times and their configurations. Emerging from the interaction of all these different versions of space time and two proto space times interacting with each other, it gives you the complexity to start to form the topologies necessary for the standard model. By simply thinking of the origin of the universe as having split into two different floppy versions of space-time, then interacting with one another, you can create or recreate the equations of motion and also the complex topologies necessary to understand the properties of matter at each point in space-time. Now, there's a little bit more to the theory than that, going into and including an understanding of spin, but this gives you an essential breakdown of what's actually happening in Eric Weinstein's theory of geometric unity.